Good morning and welcome to Together in God, a media ministry of Grace Lutheran Church of the ELCA at 202 West Grand Avenue in Eau Claire. We are excited to share with you today God's message of love and hope for all. Please join us now in worship.
Good morning. A very, very warm welcome in Christ to you this morning. Stand up. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Kids, you've been hearing us. <laughs> we, you've been hearing us talk about storms and God protecting us. So I know storms are some people's greatest fear. Mine is snakes. Uh, my brother would take me on sun, Saturday mornings. We used to have Saturday matinees, and for ten dollars, you get. A string of tickets and you tear off a ticket so each movie cost one dollar <laughs> and he liked Tarzan movies <laughs> so there were lots of snakes in Tarzan movies snakes and quicksand and I can remember thinking my luck I get stuck in quicksand and I'd reach for a branch and it would be a snake so Saturday nights I always ended up in my parents bed <laughs> and they couldn't figure out what was going on, why I was so scared. It took them about three weeks, <laughs> and then they realized, what movies is David taking her to? <laughs> After that, it was westerns. <laughs> but I liked that because there were horses there, and I liked horses. <laughs> Are you afraid of anything? Any movies that you've seen that you don't like? Any storms? You're not afraid of storms? Good for you. My son Peter is afraid of the thunder and lightning. He does not like that noise. So he's become a weatherman, and he knows how to work the computers to figure out what the weather is going to be. Well, what we have to realize is God always holds our hands in storms. We might not be able to feel him, but he's there with us. And he sent us a promise once. Do you remember a story in the Bible? about a promise that God had sent so we would not have to worry about storms anymore? A certain type of storm. Do you remember, Roar? It's about a flood. Noah, you should know this story. I bet this, he knows this story well. <laughs> but after Noah built the ark and after the floods came, God sent a rainbow at the end promising that he would never send a flood like that again. And so, I have some rainbow stickers. Well, they're clings, actually. You can put them on a window, or in my house, they always go on mirrors. Pass it along, please. And another one. And one more for work. You're welcome. And I did try this at home. <laughs> My husband said right away, do those come off? <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do come off. So this is to help you remind you that God is always with us. Even when we're afraid, he is still there. So let's say a quick prayer. Thank you, God, for being with us in the dark times and the light times. Thank you for giving us a rainbow to help remind us that you are always there. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first reading is from Job chapter 38. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of earth? Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstones when the morning stars sank together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the seas with doors when it burst out with the womb? When I made the clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it? and set bars and doors, and said, thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A much more 
spirited and happier <laughs> reading. The second reading is from Corinthians chapter 6. As we work together with him, we, were, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have committed ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful spirit, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet as well unknown, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restrictions in our affections but only in yours. In return, I speak to you as children. Open wide your hearts also. Word of God, word of life. gospel for today comes from Mark chapter 4. Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who is this? Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Good morning, everyone. I am not, <laughs> I'm not prepared to give a sermon. I give messages. I taught two sermons. So this is my message today about stilling the, the waters and calming the seas. We heard in the Old Testament when God was, when Job really, you don't know the before story, but Job has been arguing with God and, he, and God has finally had enough and he said, who laid the foundations of the earth? Who did all these things? He's asking Job, Job a series of questions and Job can't answer them because God did all this. Who shut the seas, who created kind of going toward that we have to humbly submit to God. We are submitting to him, his, his greatness, his being creator over the earth. We have to remember that he's created this, and we're just, we're out of the Garden of Eden, and we're into the tumult now. I mean, we can't control anything. Anything, the more we try to control something, the harder it is to control. 
And in the New Testament story, Paul is speaking to the Corinthians. He's writing, saying, you know, we've been here. We are disciples and faithful to Christ. Those other people that are talking to you, telling you that, you know, we're wrong or, or doing the wrong thing, that's, that's fake news, <laughs> as we would say today. Re listen to us. It is the re kind of representing in every storm some people will say it's bad, and others will say, well, you're just going to have to, you know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. We have all go through storms, whether we make them ourselves or they're provided by nature. Our uh, neighbors to the north are dealing with horrendous flooding. I do have extra rainbow stickers if you know someone living up in Duluth and Hibbing area and down in southern Minnesota to remind them that this... You know, the waters will recede. God is with them. God offers salvation to all of us. To consider, we should consider how our actions are viewed by others. And remember that we are the representatives of God and the disciples on earth. Our actions reflect on our faith. In our gospel today, Jesus calms the storm. He's relaxing in the boat, in the stern, which I, I am not a fisherman nor a boater. But I think that's the back. <laughs> and he's just sound asleep. And the fishermen that are with him, the disciples, and many of them were fishermen, they know that there's a bad storm coming. This is the Sea of Galilee, and apparently it's surrounded by hills, and the winds are very tricky. And so a storm can blow up very quickly. And they're scared to death. They think they're going to drown or die. So they go to Jesus and say, don't you care? How many times have you wondered, you know, why are the bad things happening to us? Why do we, um, I've worked so hard and so-and-so is taking vacations and has a new car. Um, are those storms we create ourselves? For nature, you know, why do people live in Tornado Alley? I mean, the tornadoes are fearsome and scary. You have to remember that there is somebody else in the boat with you. He might be sleeping. All you have to do is help wake him up. And you can rely on others to help you too, other disciples. You can be reminded that Christ is there. One of the most gun-trenching storms I went through personally is after the birth of our last son, Peter. Now, to say that Dale and I were stunned when we found out he had Down syndrome would be an understatement. I can remember the doctor coming in to talk to me and tell me, and <laughs> literally sitting there thinking, part of me is watching a basketball game on TV but he's telling me something really important. I should listen to him. And I didn't know if I was wet or dry, if I was going the right way, the wrong way. All I knew is that I needed to pray, and I was praying for strength. I did not think I had the strength to do this. I just, I didn't know how to. Luckily for Andrew, that was kind of easy. I, I mean, I kind of flubbed into it being a good mother <laughs> there, but Peter was going to need more. And we made a phone call to our pastor at the time. And he came out, but he brought his wife with him. And my goodness, I can still remember her picking Peter up and saying, oh, you beautiful child of God. And that stilled my storm. I had completely forgotten that Christ was with me. He was already listening to me. He already had faith in me that I was going to be strong enough to make that journey. But her saying that, so it wasn't even the pastor that gave me the comfort and the ability to look forward. It was his wife. Smart man. <laughs> that woman was Gloria Thorpe. And I honestly don't know if I had ever thanked her after that. I hope she realized what a gift and what a sense of calm she gave me after that. 
But that was a storm that, um, boy, I was clinging to a hand. And it turned out to be hers that woke up Christ and me to remind me that God is always, always with us. That stilled the chaos in my life, and it was chaos. I was going to say, there was no, no doubt about it. The issue is that of, of fear, fear of the unknown. God is with us. Even then, we are asking to see the gulf between my world and the world I'm going into. It's like going across the lake, going across the Sea of Galilee. We have to start at one side. Our life begins on one side. But to keep on going in your journey, you have to go to the other side. But you have to remember that Christ is always with you. When we start out, usually our, our seas are calm. And there's, there's some turbulent waters in between. And coming to the end of our lives, there are a lot of turbulent waters. Two of my friends right now just lost their father this last few months. And I hope I'm there and can give them the hand that Gloria taught me, gave me. I hope that I can be the person that they need me to be. Christ is in the boat. You just have to remember that. Remember that sometimes we create our own storms and sometimes we just fall into them. But Christ is always there too. Now when I first read this gospel lesson, I always think of music. I mean, growing up here at Grace, music was everywhere. I mean, it was everywhere. And with Elaine, music is everywhere. And of course I thought of a song it's not a song in our hymnal, and I, if you're my age, in the 70s, this song was popular. <laughs> uh, it was covered by Elvis. I, I didn't want to ask the kids, do you know who Elvis Presley is? Mm, I didn't think any of them would know. <laughs> so I didn't want to date myself with that. But this song was also covered by Anne Murray out of Canada. But it's, put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed, who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the seas. Take a look at yourself, and you may look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Remember, the man from Galilee has your hand. Amen.
Yeah, Anita, if I might add, thank you for that message. And we are really blessed to have Peter among us in our, in our community of faith. Let us join together in affirmation of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Equip your faithful people to approach this world with a sense of wonder. Make your church a safe place to process the storms of life, big questions, troubling doubts, and honest laments. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You spoke creation into order from the chaos of the swirling deep. May your name be praised by rivers and seas, wetlands and waterfalls. Secure clean water for all people and protect water sources from contamination or exploitation. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Amid whirlwinds of division, violence, and conflict, remind us again that you are as steadfast as the foundations of the earth. Rejuvenate peacemakers, advocates, and community organizers when they feel weary in their work. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Deliver your people from their distress, O God. We lift before you all who are sick or struggling especially those we name aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. Grant consolation and peace to all who live with chronic, terminal, or persistent illness. In times of affliction or hardship, sustain us in faith. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Enfold all travelers with your protection. Bless the comings and goings of this assembly as we travel for leisure or for work. Let all journeys be met with hospitality on the way, and let community members return to us with celebration. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation for all the redeemed of the Lord. Joined together with the great cloud of witnesses, we give thanks for your steadfast love and your wonderful works. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we also add a special blessing upon Joseph and Julie in their upcoming marriage. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Share his peace with one another.
Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us, and who journeys with us. Peace of the Lord be upon you. Amen. Now and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we'll sing Precious Lord Take My Hand, 773.
in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thank you for being part of our Together in God worship service. Your prayers and financial support are always deeply appreciated. Please tune in again next Sunday at the same time or join us in person at 10 a.m. in the church. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Oh,